Hello and welcome. Let's continue on within part four of this video. And I'm really proud of how I'm able to uh, put this content and how I think the next few parts are going to go. Well, I know how they're going to go as we're going to move into uh, very soon that of distribution. And then after distribution will be post distribution, like after the markets get really high, how they settle after that and then a crash stage to follow and then it will be a summary at the very end and as this is playing out 20,000 to 50,000 is in that of the neutral territory which means it has broken out above district or accumulation which is below 20,000 so what's the best approach and there's so many different ways that you can play it and at the same time Bitcoin is in at 650 which is rising very rapidly, but at this time frame, Bitcoin was at 1100 down to 250, so it's still in the middle of its retracement range, which means its, its distribution isn't until several thousand. So the approach that I'm going to take within this tutorial is selling at 33,333. But how much do we sell? Where do we go from there? Well, when looking at it, it's in a very, very extended market. It's got a pullback, but at this thing, could go up three, four, five, six fold before it pulls back if it really wants to. Because it is still in the early stages of what a very extended market would be. Now at this stage, ownership of the coins is a little over 20,000. And originally, the purchase was a little under 20,000. So you're doing things right. When you've hardly bought an extra in towards and you've already sold that back where you can... And, and, and you have more than you've already sold. You got a whole bunch of buy orders for decent amounts of Bitcoin with Bitcoin prices going up. So things are looking good at this point. Now, simple math on a 20% gain is selling two twelfths of the ownership and then keeping your value of your altcoin the same each time. So therefore, if I take one six, which is the same as two twelfths, and multiply the ownership, I get a number of around 3360. So I can round it a bit down and there'll be a lot of rounding down when I buy where if I'm buying, say, 4680, I could have bought 4691. So I'm just going to lower it a bit. But 3000 would be how many I can sell for with an intent only to buy back 3000 while profiting the rest. So in a situation like this, I am, again, so whatever the differential happens to be, and we can see it here, that if I'm selling at this, I mean, this is a Bitcoin. 3,000 at 33,000 Satoshi with a quarter of a percent rake gives you 99749. And on the buyback, if it comes, if I'm buying 3,000 at this price, which, which is where I'd be buying back at with this extended market and paying a quarter rake, it's 0.62. So the differential is 0.37 and change. And with Bitcoin prices at 659, this gives you $248 worth of cryptos and not enough to buy that much. You can store it in your hardware, buy other altcoins or have a great night out or pay for some living expenses. You have so many different choices when situations like this occur. But we're in the early stages, if, if even that, of uh, when we're talking about real profit taking, which happens in distribution levels. So therefore, after selling the 3000 coins, that brings it down to 17,000. And this is the list of buy orders that are going through uh, there. I mean, 20,000, 15, 12, 9,073, 56, 44, and 3,000. And partial order math. Uh, what, what, okay, okay, so you sold seventh earlier, we sold 5,000 at the 28 handle near. So if we take 5,000, multiply the number, multiply the rake, that's uh, 1.39. So if we take that 1.39 divided by the price we would buy back at, which is the 15,000, then that is uh, 92.63. So therefore, I want a number in between 5,000 and 92. And 71, well, that number happens to be just that, in between. And there's a bunch of orders even below 3,000, Satoshi. You know, you just forget that, delete that. In fact, a lot of these orders are going to end up in time becoming deleted and you can already have that done I don't want to order at 9,000 or 7,000 or any of these lower ones if the price goes lower I can re-enter those orders 
but you realistically don't have much of a chance right now at filling those orders. So therefore, the sell strategy moving forward. This is where it gets very interesting. Again, so many different ways you can do this. So something that I would like to do probably around this stage would be the following. Keep selling 1 11th of what you own every time it moves up 10%. Now, why do I say 1 11th? Because if you gain one unit when it was worth 10, then I need to take the one of that 11 out. So basically a little over 9% to Bitcoin cost average, your high price, the best you can. Not dollar cost average, Bitcoin cost average. So I can put all these sell orders here. I can take the, the price in here of 17,180 and then multiply it by this here, which means 1,560, which would be rounded down to be a little higher than that. And this is where I'm rounding higher on the upper end. So what I'll do is I'll take the sell order at uh, 33,333. Well, that's 36,695, which of course has already been done. Wait a second. Okay, well, do, do, do you... It's okay, this is a little off, but it's pretty much on, and it's not going to come into play too much in here. You should start this... No, 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 this is right. Throw that, no, no, throw that. Is... Yeah, I've taken 33,000, my last sale, and I'm multiplying it by 10%. So that'd be about 36,666. Let's round up to 95. And in here, we would take the price again, multiply 1.11, and I do so until it reaches 50,000, which is right in here. And then after that, you splurge order your final 11.8. What do I mean by splurge sell? Well, you got the four in already to Bitcoin cost average up. Maybe you can put one in at about 65,000, maybe put 4,000 in there. And then maybe at about 150,000, maybe another, maybe another 4,000, and then maybe 3x or 4x from that. You put the rest of them in. You can keep them in your hardware wallet, but this brings an interesting time because you got realistic shots of hitting those big levels, and you got a good chance of just needing to have them anyway. Because if the market goes up, you're just going to be selling as it is anyway. But all that selling is not going to matter here because the market would proceed lower from this $33,000 high. Over the next month and around a month or so, maybe a little less, the price action falls from 33 down to 15. Bitcoin also had a small fall below 600 at this time. And uh, so there's a few buys occur. The 20,000 handle, it got filled. And the 15,000 gets filled as well. So that means we were at 17,180, an increase of over 10,000, not at 27,280. So instead of selling a tenth of what we have at like 10% gains, I wanna go back to where we were, but sell one eighth. So therefore one eighth of this would mean selling at about 3,400, and then the upper stakes at 5,500. And as this would play out, the highest buy order got is at uh, 12,024. And we'll put some sell orders at 21. So if you're buying at 15, or 22 even, selling at 22, what's the difference of that? 15 at seven, that's over 40%. But where does 22 lay here? Just below this previous high here. That's the most realistic level and go to. And the upper, I want to, I don't even want to do previous high. In fact, you could even go higher than that. And I was just thinking, I don't want to go 29. That's just not high enough. And 34 is 35, 36 is just not that big of a break above resistance. Now 39, I still think is very conservative. If it goes and breaks it, I think 44, 48, 55, 60 can most certainly be in store. So if you want to get how creative you want to get with this, the message of the market can tell you more. But mathematically speaking, if I'm going from 22 to 40, that's almost double as it is. So that math is just phenomenal to have a sell in that type of sequence. But as the market moved on, it went up and you've got the original sell order. 
And then I came back to this little area here. So you sell 34 at the 22, you buy back uh, an additional 1560. You could do a partial order here, but at this stage I'm gonna play normal buybacks until of course we can get uh, up to that uh, close to that 40 50,000 level so overall 1560 added to bring the inventory up to 28,840 that's just incredible because I, and I was a trader myself and I get to low inventory levels a lot of times I welcome these buys which is a good reason here why I probably wouldn't want to do a partial order so I placed a new sell order at the previous high near 22795 what's this in here and the upper maybe up to about 36 will go as it's already had a little bit of retracement in here and that to me because of the time factor I can reduce its volatility and and then mathematically going from 23 to 36 is just a phenomenal increase of about 50 percent and since that point only one trade was made I got four circles in here but these were the three previous ones we already done already which was buy, sell, buy back, and then we got the sell. And then the market went symmetrical. I don't even know if I spelled that right. I didn't even want to check. But we can see in here. Uh, let me just bring up my drawing tool. Uh, that market went on this uptrend. Market went on this downtrend. This is always an indecisive mode. It's got to break itself to one side or another, which is why I like the style of trading, because I don't care mathematically or I'm concerned about which direction this breaks out of. Rather, when my buy order gets hit, I'll adjust to the play from there. Same thing with the sell order. Now, after 3,400 was sold, I have a buy order back at this 15,000 number. I'd be waiting to buy there. I'd have a sell order in at 29, 775, and the upper in at 43. And the inventory down to 25.4, but still decently above where it started at and following through that as we move into Christmas it doesn't look like shit's missed this year as it was the previous time when it was way down but the, what a phenomenal year this would be for profit uh, for trading but as it ended the symmetrical triangle obviously broke to the upside this was the end of it beforehand and box number one is where you would sell 3400 at the uh, 28 level it's actually below that number it's not at that top but because we can see it went up to 32 but you would got 28 box number two was a buy order at 20. now box number three that's where i'd be looking to sell and uh, sometimes you're going to miss it and th this would be a case where you would so assuming that that was the case you ended up uh selling at the end of October or excuse me middle of October buying at the end of October and then as November started the market rallied it came close to where your sell order was in here but close as I've heard before only counts on horseshoes and hand grenades at least that's what Jesse Ventura used to say back in the WWE when I was a child in the 1980s that's and other people used to say that all the time in the 80s that was a common phrase I don't know if it is anymore but when something like that happens, I'm, I'm a firm believer you have to, when you miss either a buy order or sell order, it's smart to adjust it. Meaning, adjust it barely below the previous level, which is below here, or significantly higher. Now in a spot like this, we can see that this little area here is a little bit higher, which is where I would have chosen with this. Now had, of course you ended up selling where that high would have been you would have been able to buy back uh, a few days later on the november uh, lows back in here but when you miss it you miss the opportunity and that's just going to happen and it's you're not losing you're just not getting as much of the gains as you could be and you're already as we can see within this doing phenomenally well within a strategy like this so it would end up as you would get your sell at the higher price in here so now i'd be looking to buy back at 24 10. why would i be looking to buy back at 24 which is uh, right in here. Well, it's where it came from. It's a decent pierce below the high above around 25 change. And when I'm selling at 33 and buying back at 24, that's a very good differential for price. And I can get obviously a lot more of these coins as we can see. 
And within this, as we continue to go forward, the inventory has fallen lower to uh, 23480 It's still much higher than the original buy. But Bitcoin is also pumping at this point to 1100 back to its previous high. And now as you look at your portfolio as a trader, at least with this coin, because you could be doing this with four or five or ten other altcoins as well. But you have noticed that we've increased the amount of these coins we have held. We've got a lot of buy orders valued at 1100 So if you're ever looking at some of that, you could have a lot of them in your hardware wallets. Hmm, do I buy some silver? Do I do this? Do Putting in a little bit that, thinking and doing a lot of that is in play and should be done. But you also got to realize that as far as Bitcoin is going, isn't played out, it's an accumulation mode and it remains until it has a, a decent break above, or it's actually, yeah, it's the accumulation neutral mode. Until it can get to several thousand, that's not when you would want to have a significant amount of selling because you had the previous high many years before then of 1200. You pulled back to 250, you're now back to the same level again. If you break that resistance, you got to think it's going to be several folds higher. Okay, now as we move forward into December, not going down. I mean, decent retracement. It looks better than it actually is for what you're able to get, but one buy order filled. And it was filled at 24,000 as well. So you're down from that point. Your order below that was 15,000. It did not fill. I would increase it to 16,010. That's what the previous low here was, was 16. So as I mentioned before with the sell, when you, when you miss it barely, your buy order was here, or maybe even a hair above that number, that line rather, and you missed it. So you'd want to go down towards here or up to previous low, just a little hair above. That's what I like to do. So I would increase it a little bit above. In fact, I'd even almost be considered buying a little bit at 25. But I, I am a little. I, I mean, I know it's probably going to go down. I mean, I'm not getting a good deal on my last sell. I'm getting like maybe a 10% gain or something. It's not, because I was selling in the low 20s, like 23 or 24, around 23, to get that buy order that I had. So I would probably go 16. Now the inventory rises to 30,000 and change. Which that means I can slightly increase the stakes to 3,500 and 6,000. I can put a sell order in at 33,895. Now that's previous below previous high. What other choices do I have here? I mean, I'd have to think if it's going to go anywhere, it's going to go down into here. But if I'm buying at 24 and that area is like 28 or 29, I don't want to do that. So. I, and I, I think the math on 24 to 33, that's about, I can't go any lower lower on the lower high. So that's about as low as I can go in placing that order. Then we'll just put an upper at about 55. I'm not happy putting it there because I got to go significantly higher. But let's move on to the next uh, image. And this is where adjusting to the message of the market works as the market did actually manage to go to 16,000 or over to 17,000. Hmm. Well, that's maybe I sh either way. This might have been wrong. Let me just, but let's just assume you did 17,000 only because I did it this way. So you got your buy order, your inventory is up to 34,9910 after buying 4,800. But let's talk about some Fibonacci retracement here. We have a, a high of 300, which is really um, 30,000. It's not 300. That's like 360 we will go. And 157. Okay, so let's just do it this way. Now what you're trying to do whenever you see a spot that looks like this, and uh, here we got 258, which I had 234. 
Whenever you see a spot down like this, I'm always going to be looking to sell it to Pierce above 61.8 or just something like that. So that's why I'm bringing it up within that measure but just hypothetically assuming we buy at 17,000 then uh, let's uh, see where we go from here and markets going sideways here at the 20 number so let's adjust to the message of the market it didn't pierce above much on that Fibonacci number or, or the sell order and that was the wrong number which is not a surprise now but Bottom line is your sell order, again, was another miss. So therefore, it needs to be adjusted. Where, where's it going to go if it breaks this resistance level in here? You missed your sell order. You got this situation in here. You got this going on, breaking out above this. Yeah, in here. So 28,975 which matches up with it, of course, uh, this in here. That's where I'd be looking for the sell order with an upper near 50, a little below. And then a lot happened. It broke out higher. And pretty much, okay, it could a little bit higher than the 28, but it worked out. If, if you look at the next day, right below where that lower second box, the lower box is, there was a pierce that happened to go right where it came from, which is always where you should be looking to buy back, right in here. Uh, th th to me, this is an obvious spot you're going to hit near it. It should be like every time. It also meant that if you didn't log in that day, you wouldn't have got the buyback. But until it changes, I'm going to keep on selling that range. You can see I sold where, and this we, I've done this before in the previous part. Sell where you did before, buy back where you did again in here. Because you wouldn't have bought at the previous uh, lows in here. That just wouldn't happen. But you didn't have to change your order because it was noticeably uh, uh, the decent lay got lower here. So you didn't have to change the buy orders. And then this happened where it uh, pierced lower, went down to about 15,000 and uh, back up to 19. So we sell 35, buy 45, sell 35, buy 45. Therefore, a gain of, uh, well, 1580 times 2, that would be 3160. Or 2160, rather. So the lowest, lowest buy order is 12,024 Satoshi. And you really might want to consider raising that. Now, a big reason for that was because of your increasing your sell and buying at 24 compared to 20. Because of, uh, and you can see where it was the right play. But in a spot like this, when you have a big gap differential, when 24 was your buy order and before that it was 12. And then just sticking one in around 15 or 16, I'm not going to do it here, but that's something I probably would have considered doing, is just sticking one in right around here somewhere. Because, And that's simply because of the mathematics. If I'm buying at 24, where is it going to go next? So that's something in the consideration for it, but in this case, that's not going to be what's done. Now, as it stands, 2,160 coins have been added for 37,070 magnificent given the price is between the accumulation and the neutral the increasing orders to uh, 4,000 7,000 is going to be the play moving forward selling next at 28,975 which is in between the 25 and the 35 are pretty much near previous high and the upper is going to be traded in at 45,000 we are now going to be entering into distribution in the next video. You don't, trader, you, as a trader, you don't know this at the time. But we are looking at the date of late February 2017 now, after starting this in 2015. And this is when pretty much every cryptocurrency started a wild ride. And I haven't named which cryptocurrency this is yet. But this one was no exception. So in the next part, 
the distribution phase. Thank you for tuning in, and thank you for tuning in again to part five after this.